Hello, it's the first of the month and episode two of our critical thinking series. Some interesting observations this month, or past month, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and uh, always feel free to like disagree or criticize, yell at me, or whatever you want to do is cool. Um, basically, I'm not here to prove my point or <coughs> my opinions. I'd like to listen to everybody. I could be wrong and like to admit when I'm wrong. And um, some interesting things I found out this week that are alarming, but kind of I predicted, a lot of other people predicted as well as myself. As in the last time we discussed the uh, the men behind the curtain who want to keep China and the tariffs, they want to get rid of the tariffs and keep China business as usual. We, we went over that. So this week, it's been like a big thing with these masks, and um, certain people are insisting that certain people wear them, not wear them, take them on, take them off. To me, it seems like the mask, the mask, you know, like, I got one here, look at mine, mine's all, mine's all beat up, <laughs> I have a few construction, look, I, I drew a smiley on it, wait, where is it, can you see the smile, it's kind of worn off. They should put smiles on. But what's happening now is this has become saying, I'm anti-Trump. I'm a Biden. I'm a Democrat. Whatever it is, whatever you are, I don't I don't really care about politics per se because it's all fake. It's all bought off by lobbyists. Uh, so basically this mask has become a political flag. Like bumper stickers, you know, people with bumper stickers, will Obama, Trump, whatever on their car and like, it's like the show in people's face, like, um, I care about human life and not about money. Okay, I, I respect that. I mean, I, that that's definitely, everyone should be that way. But, they're not really being uh, honest, because I got a few people on this one already. If you're so concerned about human life, and you're so compassionate, which is a nice trait, of course, so, did you get your antibody test and your COVID test? Did you get it? Because most people that are pushing the mask that I talk to, that are anti-Trump or anti-whatever, most of them it seems like they didn't bother getting the antibody or the if they're infectious or, or they're spreaders or did they have it and beat it or all these things are critical to know to protect other people. Yet the ones that walk around with their flag on their face... They didn't get an antibody test. So I, I push it on. I'm like, yo, okay. What did, what's your test? What was the re Oh, I didn't get one. Why not? You take your mask home and go home to your family and, and people in your home. So there's a possibility of that spreading from you. So you should get the test. Now, I know several people have had this corona. One guy lived in a house, 80 year old grandfather was there, sick mother in law. He was in the house, what, three weeks? No one got sick but him. And he went back to work in like, I don't know, two weeks he was back to work. He drives a truck in a city in Queens, delivery truck. So that's the point, second point I'm going to make here because I won't make this a long-winded thing. Right, yesterday, I'm in Walmart getting my first haircut since, I don't know, December because you couldn't get haircuts. <laughs> I look like Bob Dylan. Or the hair bear cartoon with the hair sticking up. I got an afro. I got a white man afro. But anyway, so what's funny is uh, not funny. This is this is a clue to the puzzle here. The girl, the lady, she's like forty, really nice. Cuts my hair. She works like an independent shop in Walmart. And I won't mention names or places or anything. I'm talking to her. She says, "Yeah, the governor called Walmart the manager here, and this is one in Virginia." And tells Walmart, um, hey, we want you to make all the customers wear masks. Which, logically, you would do, right? Because there's several hundred, I mean, four or five hundred people in Walmart. And they're not all separated exactly. And there's little kids running between people. You'd get the drift, right? So logically, scientifically, wearing a mask would be logical, correct? Well, Walmart tells the governor, nah. We'll lose too much business. That was their response to the 
The manager was told to tell the governor that. <laughs> okay, that's part one out of three now. As I'm talking to the lady getting my hair cut, because she's paranoid, because her corporation told her everyone coming in for haircuts should have a mask, which makes sense, like a dentist or people that are in very close proximity to another person, or infects, possibly infected. Makes sense that if you're a haircutter, I would probably do it too and wash with alcohol. Because uh, you're dealing with strange new people every day, right? Logically. As we're talking, the UPS guy, and these guys, you know, they're always running. They're in shape. They're, they, they have to. It's part of their corporate thing is to move fast, 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 right? He comes, there's big signs on the haircutting place. Don't come in without a mask. And out of respect, I put the mask on. What can I do in crowded places? I'm not an anti-masker. Nope. I understand. Because it could stop you from spreading it to someone else. But it does go through the eyes. If someone coughs and sneezes, you can get it into the conjunct um, conjunctiva, the blood vessels in the white part of your eyes. In medical school, they teach you that. You, the infectious material goes right in. All right, so in comes the UPS guy, no mask, running, running, running with all the packages. I say, excuse me, sir, I'm not going to break your chops. I'm not, I'm not trying to harass you or cause trouble. Let me ask you a question. Did UPS tell you guys that you should wear a mask? You know what is the response? <laughs> he says, UPS corporate said, we don't, we're not supposed to wear masks. It interferes with our breathing. We can't do our job to be efficient and make money. Distributing Amazon and Walmart and all these big box store products to all those sheeple sitting home. You know? So, UPS guys deal with thousands of strangers a day. From door to door to door to place, touching close to people they signed a pen. If they were infected, God forbid, or they went to an infected place, logically they could infect. Incredible. I've been saying this since January in the post office and UPS, FedEx. And it, it all of a sudden went away. People were talking about it, and then it kind of got squashed. So he says that's the official policy UPS don't wear masks. Well, can someone verify that for me? He told me that in front of the lady. And she almost fell down because she had a mask on and so did I. Like I said, I'm not a big mask pusher. I'm not a fascist masker <laughs> or an anti-masker. Well, I'm not. So that's the big one, okay? In town here, there's a small town where I am now. i got to go back to New York next week. But it's a college town. There's a sizable population here. I'm UPS and stuff to my daughter in New York City during the height of this thing. She had to get diapers for the baby. Food. Just back when doomsdays were going on. I remember back in April, March, there's going to be no food. It's the end of the world. So, the lady comes in, the post lady, you know, from the post office with a giant sack of mail. Like they walk around the whole town, door to door, door to door. Uh, I'm like, hi, Mrs. Post Lady. Uh, shouldn't you, shouldn't you especially be wearing a mask because you see so many strange new people every day and, and, and go to door to door handing things to people without gloves and no the post office says we don't have to do any of that which is partly half percent I think it's 50 percent federal government 50 percent private my, my head exploded you know I'm an engineer I took physics logic, you know, I'm, I'm into that, and, you know, of course, there's things that aren't explained that we don't know, but logic and physics and, and, and common sense kind of saves the world, <laughs> so, for, <clears throat> so far, excuse me, folks, please, can someone explain this to me, why, you know, Walmart, huge corporation with thousands of factories in China, says, don't, you know, we're not going to make our customers wear masks, Okay, employees kind of have to, which, you know, because of lawsuits, see, they're afraid of lawsuits, that, God forbid, someone gets it that works there, can sue Walmart, they're not concerned about the general public, UPS, to keep their, very efficient, they are very efficient, um, delivery system going for all these packages being ordered online for big box stores, Internet stores, uh, 
don't bother it. Don't wear a mask. FedEx, I don't see FedEx. Although FedEx is a pretty good company too. And I haven't noticed them with masks. And then the big one is the post lady. Now, can someone verify this? Or I've been looking into it. I can't get answers. I called the postmaster general and asked him. And he says they don't have to wear anything. So, I think everyone should pause here and stop and think. Now, Sweden, who I've always admired, um, the most left-wing, liberal, tolerant country, you know, said, we're not doing any of this. We're not going to go crazy and shut the country down. Um, their death rate's almost down to nothing now, compared to Europe. If you notice, certain people want to compare Sweden only to other Scandinavian countries. That's not fair. Let's compare it to Europe. Italy, Spain, France, England especially, because they're suffering terribly. Why is it that Sweden, it's 5,000 people, mainly elderly people, who they did try to separate safely away, unlike in New York where they put defective people into the old folks' homes. Why is Sweden 5,000 people uh, died out of 10 million? And they have like Malmo and, um, and uh, Stockholm. They have big cities. It's not like they're all living in some cabin in the woods, like some people say. Now, what's comical, and I'm a moderate left-leaning person, um, is now the leftists hate Sweden. They hate Sweden. They think Sweden's a pariah. Wait a minute here, man. Let's look over a period of two or three years from economic stresses and problems. How many people, bad things happen to them? overall from the stresses of a failed economy, okay, added into the virus, and now they're drumming up a new swine pig flu virus, but if you look back, like I said, I traced it back to 1957 was the first pandemic that came out of that region of China, there's been several, the biggest being 1968 Hong Kong flu, which killed a million people worldwide, 100,000 Americans, and we had Woodstock Peace Love and Granola Bars, like I said the last time. And, and the moonshot came out like a few months later. And it was all gone. If this was not an election year in China, you notice how China was uh, being demonized for months? Everywhere you look, bad China, conspiracies, they, they did the virus on purpose. We don't know the facts about this yet. It is very suspicious. You notice how it was all over the place on the news internet now it's kind of quieted down so what's taking place now what's substituted and supplanted evil bad china thing blm antifa uh, institutional racism which i don't really where who's making up these names we had a black president we have the richest people in the world are black here my granddaughter's black okay my daughter married a jamaican guy we're not there's no it, it, I'm not even going to... Malcolm X warned everybody, like I told last time, the biggest enemy of African Americans in this country has been these white liberal rich manipulators that use black people as pawns and keep them down in a ghetto and use them... They take them out of a shelf for an election. Look at these 